Hi, this is a tutorial for creating a multi-sample drum kit using Pro Tools here and Native Instruments Battery 3. So, firstly, we look at this in Pro Tools. We have a session here where I've recorded a bunch of drums. Um, these are multi-sampled, and what I've done is recorded a bunch of microphones for a bunch of different drums, in this case a kick. We've got a close, far, overheads and ambient mics. And what I'm going to do is I've got these hits going from soft to hard there, going from a very sort of soft sound up until a very loud sound. And um, what we've done is we've chopped these up. So what we do first is we simply group the track using the control or command and G command there. Just group the, group, group the drums that you're going to be using together. We just use the tab to transient feature, control and E, which or command and E if you're on the Mac, which is going to chop up the samples. And very simply keep repeating that until we've got these tracks all chopped up. So that can be quite a long process, so with that out of the way, we can look at these ones that I made earlier. Okay, in this case what I've done is I have selected 12 samples here. I've popped them into order of velocity just by checking the peak levels. And we have these going from sort of a soft hit there to a very hard hit here. Now, once we've got those in order, what I've done is I've renamed them, given them a quick naming convention like kick close 1 there, kick close 12 for the heaviest, and do the same with the ambient, give it an AMB or whatever. So you're giving them some kind of naming convention, they're going to be easy to sort out and know which is which. Do that to whatever suits your tastes. Now, if we select all of those together, we've got all of these edited drum drum 1 hits. You may want to cut the ends down as well for the decay. Um, you can right-click over here in the clips window, and you can export clips as files so what you do with that is you simply just open that export them where you want pop them in the folder you'd like and that should create all of these as individual WAVs um, as individual one-shot samples which you can then load up into battery so moving over to battery once you've created a bunch of samples you can create that for any drums that you've recorded in a session you know we've done a whole kit here um, in this case we've got a kick, snare, hi-hats, toms and a crash. So all of these are now multi-sampled, but in order to put these in there in battery like that, we need to have a look first at a new kit. And if we look here, we've got this cell view, so there's a whole bunch of cells in which you can add your own samples. In this case, we're just going to add a kick sample, so right-click, add sample. And here's our list of kick drum samples here. We've got the ambience close. So if we select close kick one there, open that in, you've got a very, very light drum kit. Because that's the very lightest sound we're going to be using. Now we don't want just that, we want a whole bunch of sounds. We want them to kind of map across the velocity range. So in this case, we can move over here to the mapping window. And as you can see, there's that, there's that sound. And it is mapped across the entire range of velocities. Now there's these little controls here the low and high velocity, we need to adjust them, so if you just click and drag that will bring it down, so in this case say we go 1 to 30 we've got that is covering from 1 to 30 in the velocity levels, so what we want to do now to add more sounds and to add multiple samples is to add zone, you right click and you click add zone there okay, now you may select the next one like say kick close or 2 that will come up here, we want to drag that to the side there so we can see it better Say we go on that one, we could go from 31 up to, hold on, yeah, so we go from 31 to 55, for example. Now, each one of those is going to be mapped across a different part of the velocity. So when we do that across the whole range, we keep adding, you know, louder and louder samples there for each velocity that you would hit the hit over an e-drum or something else at. If we look at the actual kit that I've loaded up fully here, we can see that in full effect. So you have drum hits right across the velocity range there. You'll notice they're in a curve as well, and that kind of reflects a playing style. You may want to experiment with those and see how you do. But in this case, we don't just have close mics. We have a far mic. Now, the corresponding far mic recordings of exactly the same hits are going to get mapped to exactly the same velocities and you don't really want these to overlap you just want them to have their own little range for each one there 
Now, unfortunately, there was something that said replace zone. Replace zone allow, should allow you to replace it with another sample, which would make it very easy to do this. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually work, so you're stuck. And what I've had to do is I've actually put all of these values in the velocity range here into a text document and have literally just written them down and had to load all the other samples. It's quite laborious, but eventually it's worth it. So we've done that for the overheads and the ambient. We've done that for all the different ones. You see we use slightly different curves for the different sort of drums, depending on how you want them to react. Okay, so now what you've got is you've got these multi-samples, and as you can see, if you're hitting the sort of light hits there, heavier hits there. You can see that red line was appearing. That's showing you where those hits were actually appearing at in MIDI. Now, to see the difference between multi-samples and normal samples, we can look at a couple of MIDI hits I've got here that I've sort of pre-prepared. You can look at these, and if we go here, you can see, if you look carefully, all of these sort of velocities are at full velocity. So if you listen to this, it sounds quite mechanical. <laughs> So as you can see, they're quite kind of mechanical sounding fills there. Now this one is the same beat, but with different velocities mapped. And now these will trigger different samples depending on how loud they are in terms of velocity. So if you listen to that sample, it sounds very different. So as you can see, it sounds a lot more realistic and there's a lot more sort of expression to the sounds and that's the multi-samples being used in action. Um, now another thing we might want to do to quickly cover is to look at these different sort of things and we can route them. Um, now this kind of is in conjunction with Pro Tools. Once you've got these multi-samples set up, you may want to have say the overheads or the ambience will want to be on a different channel. So you can route those to separate auxes which allows you to control the mix very well. And you can do that with any combination of drums. But in this case we have all the close and position mics are coming out the master channel here. On the output section of the cell menu. Now the overheads if you look we've set them to 3 and 4. And any of the ambient mics, we've set to 5 and 6, so all the ambient and overheads are coming out in separate channels. Now over in um, the mixer in Pro Tools, I've created two aux tracks here. Now these are stereo aux tracks, and each one of those is set in the I.O. settings up here to listen to the plug-in, battery, and then you've got 3 and 4, and here you've got 5 and 6. So if we were to play this back again now, we can see that each one of these is going to set those to their own level. So if we take those down, you can hear just the close mics. And if we bring up that, you can get the overheads and the ambient mics. can apply any sort of combination of mix sort of things you want. The good thing is that you can add external plugins. So although there is an effects section here that you can add certain things to your samples, you can now add external effects and you can add them just to the room mics or just to the overheads as you would with a real kit and you can have a very expressive sound. So that concludes a quick tutorial on how to set up a multi-sampled kit and how to route it within battery and Pro Tools.